What if I told you that one of the greatest scientists in history never received a formal education and started as a bookbinder's apprentice? That he transformed himself from a poor errand boy into the man who unlocked the secrets of electricity. This is not the story of a university professor. This is the story of Michael Faraday, the man who lived in the lab, who worked with his hands and thought with lightning. Let's step into a day in the life of the original experimental genius and uncover the insane daily routine of Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday was born in 1791 in Newtington, just outside London, into a poor family. His father was a blacksmith and Faraday received only the most basic schooling before being sent to work at age 13. He became an apprentice to a bookbinder and it was here that he began reading the books he was binding, volumes on chemistry, physics and electricity. By sheer determination, Faraday attended science lectures by Sir Humphrey Davy, eventually joining the Royal Institution as Davy's assistant. What followed was a career of jaw-dropping discoveries. Electromagnetic induction, electrolysis, the electric motor, the transformer, and even the foundations of field theory. Legend has it that Einstein kept Faraday's picture on his wall. And yet Faraday never sought wealth or fame. He sought truth in the quiet order of a lab. Let's look at how he structured his days. Faraday's daily routine was not glamorous. It was relentless, focused, rhythmic, almost monastic. He lived inside the Royal Institution above the laboratory. His commute? A staircase. While exact times varied, Faraday's routine likely included a set of repeated habits and rhythms grounded in discipline, curiosity, and service to science. Based on letters, journals, and recollections from those who knew him, we can reconstruct what a typical day in his life might have looked like. Faraday rose with the sun. He wasn't a night owl. He believed in early rising and immediate mental activity. In his small apartment, he began the day with quiet reading, often scientific papers, sometimes scripture. He once said, a man who is certain he is right is almost sure to be wrong. This morning hour was about humility, learning, and grounding his curiosity. Before heading into experiments, he tidied his space. Faraday believed order was essential for clear thought. He cleaned his desk, arranged his tools, and sometimes walked briefly in the courtyard. He famously disliked clutter, once writing, work, finish, publish. This was the heart of Faraday's day. He worked in the lab for eight to 10 hours, sometimes with only a short break for food. He performed experiments on electromagnetism, gases, optics, and materials. Each trial was recorded in painstaking detail in his notebooks. Over 30,000 pages survive. His lab wasn't just for discovery. It was a sanctuary. He didn't rush. He tested, observed, repeated. He said, nothing is too wonderful to be true if it be consistent with the laws of nature. At midday, Faraday paused. Lunch was simple. Bread, cheese, perhaps tea. Then came correspondence. He wrote hundreds of letters every year. Polite, methodical, deeply thoughtful. Unlike many scientists, he believed the style of writing mattered. His letters, even scientific ones, read like literature. In the afternoon, he returned to the lab or gave public lectures. Faraday believed science should be shared. He held public experiments, even for children. His Christmas lectures became legendary and continue to this day. These lectures were free and aimed at democratizing science, reinforcing Faraday's deep commitment to public education and making scientific knowledge accessible to all. He had an intuitive gift for explaining complex ideas with physical demonstrations. A candle, a coil, a magnet. Simplicity revealing truth. As the day ended, Faraday returned to his quarters and reviewed the day's work. He reread his notes, often rewriting entire sections for clarity. No conclusion was accepted unless observed multiple times. Then he read again, scientific works or the Bible. Faraday believed in recovery. He slept early with no alcohol, no distractions, no nightlife. He once turned down a prestigious royal title, writing, 
I must remain plain Michael Faraday to the last. His modesty was as radical as his science. So what made Faraday so productive, even without a university degree? Here are three lessons from his insane routine. Number one, routine is a laboratory for the mind. Faraday's repetitive rhythm wasn't dull. It was refining. He eliminated distractions and let the routine sharpen his thinking. Lesson, discipline is a form of freedom. Number two, clarity in thought, clarity in action. Faraday documented everything clearly, rewrote his thoughts, and always returned to the fundamentals. The lesson here, write it down, rewrite it, understand it again. Number three, curiosity with reverence. Faraday's science was deeply spiritual. He approached nature with awe, not arrogance. The lesson, stay humble before the mystery. In a world addicted to credentials and fame, Faraday reminds us that passion, perseverance, and a clean notebook can change the world. He wasn't a prodigy. He was persistent. He didn't publish for applause. He worked for truth. He didn't chase complexity. He revealed simplicity. So the next time you feel overwhelmed by not being qualified enough, remember Faraday. You don't need permission to learn. You just need a routine and a reason. If this inspired you, hit the like button, subscribe, and comment below which part of Faraday's routine surprised you the most. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more iconic routines. See you next time.